Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to the Confident Women Leader Show. This is my third episode and I'm really excited to bring a really special guest to you today. The Confident Women Leader Show is where women go from chaos to confidence. They step in, they step up, they're being the change that their organizations need them to be. We believe that confident women leaders are changing the world. My guest today is Alyssa Huffman. Welcome, Alyssa. Hello, Dina. Thank you for having me. Oh, so great to have you here. You're a single mother. You are the Director of Marketing and Clinical Development for Fuse Medical. You're also the Strategic Director of NEOS, which is a private equity group. But even more impressive is that she is the CEO of a her new, her own new orthopedic medical device company. So that's super exciting. And I've known Alyssa for over the last year now. It seems like it, I've known you for a lifetime, just to be really honest. Um, and strangely so, we both went to Washington University. We live in central Missouri here in Springfield, but yet we live really close together. So it's really been fun to share a lot of stories and business ideas together. Um, so welcome, Alyssa. I'm so excited again to have you on the show today. And I would like for you to share with the audience what you'd like for them to know about you. Well, thank you, Dina. I appreciate and I'm humbled that you made the request to invite me on. Um, I, uh, I am probably grit and perseverance is something <laughs> that is my yes. number one forte. Um, and I credit that to the, having uh, been in the OR for many years. Uh, working as an orthopedic implant uh, distributor and sales rep for multiple companies um, as a 1099. So um, having that entrepreneurial background starting off in my 20s really pushed me to, to persevere um, and uh, it lead, led into my out-of-the-box thinking. Um, strategy and design um, combining solutions is, is something that I've pride myself on. And I, I really had a lot of um, great encouragement and great uh, leaders who have believed in me over the years and uh, kind of had to go through my own process to believe in myself. Um, as people pleasing can be, it can be a, one of my worst qualities and, and also a strength as well. So I've had to learn how to balance that. Um, I have the coolest little guy on the face of the earth, in my opinion, as every mother usually thinks. <laughs> He's yes. eight years old and he is just a cool kid and knows exactly who he is, which um, is my most, uh, I know I should be prideful, but I'm really proud of what a, a great kid he's become and he's growing into. I love that. I love that. Yes. And you should be for sure. I love that you talked a couple things about strategy and, and, you know, this entrepreneur spirit. And when you talk about those things requires a lot of confidence. Tell us about your experience and how you were able to step into your confidence. Well, I think there was a, a lot of divine intervention. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in 2007, I started as a 1099 sales rep. So no uh, health benefits, no nothing. And uh, I just asked for the chance uh, to do something. I got a little lucky, um, but uh, it was very, very challenging to say the least. Um, so that developed my grit um, and my perseverance. Dur while in the OR um, and working, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to work in a field where um, I was able to have a variety of manufacturers that I represented. Uh, and represented everything from the neck down in the anatomy, whether uh, for orthopedic and spine and biologics, regenerative medicine, so on and so forth. I was the only woman uh, in the region in orthopedics um, uh, for a very long time. Uh, I would go to meetings and I would be the only woman and there would be uh, 300, 500 men there. And so I had to be very cautious um, and I also had to be very strategic. I was not able to travel with, with, the, with the men and go on golfing excursions like, like a lot of the reps did um, to be competitive. What I did was strategically say, okay, I have to be smarter than everybody else. Mm -hmm. I have to put my nose in the books and admit when I don't know some, something and learn it. 
and be overprepared. So when holidays were coming up, I would look at the case, uh, the schedule lineup, and I would overprepare for other people's cases because I knew somebody was going to fall short. So I became the one-stop shop that people could trust and for not only the surgical instrumentation that they needed uh, for their patients, but as also mm -hmm. as a resource in my intel in emerging technology. Um, for example, regenerative medicine and uh, computer navigation. So um, that really, um, uh, with regards to divine intervention, I started sketching out uh, designs of implants that I that could be used in different applications um, by maybe a little bit of modification. I tried to patent uh, some of the designs in 2011 and then got overwhelmed uh, mm -hmm. with the cost. And um, I really didn't have a support system that was uh, encouraging. I had a lot of people say, you have a great job. Why would you want to do anything else? Um, just go with it. Be happy with what you have. Um, in 2016, I went through a separation, uh, 2018, uh, was in a severe car wreck with my friends. Um, uh, somebody almost died. Uh, two people actually almost died out of the four people. And, uh, it was the next year I, uh, or that moment, I remember going, if I would have died at that moment, I would have regretted, I would have been disappointed in what I had done with my life. So I got in, I strategically thought about how I was going to deliver and meet my own expectations of myself and also uh, provide maybe some inspiration for my son to never mm -hmm. let age get in the way, never let uh, circumstances get in the way. And I joined the EMBA program. I, and I got accepted for within, I think I got my approval letter the Friday before the classes started. <laughs> I didn't even have my books wow. and just, uh, wow. <laughs> just went in uh, full speed ahead. And, uh, and then I had brain surgery while in the midst of the EMBA during COVID. <laughs> and yeah. being a single parent of a, a child who uh, I was learning how to become a homeschool teacher a little bit. And he was virtual <laughs> homeschool. Thank goodness. Um, for the Springfield public school system, but it was definitely a transition. And I got lucky um, because I uh, Fuse Medical hired me the week before COVID hit. Wow. And my CEO is, his name is Chris Rieg. He is a brilliant man, compassionate and an incredible boss. I told him the project that I was working on uh, with Illuminate and uh, he was he's always been encouraging. So I'm very thankful for just a great team and, a, and, mm -hmm. and some divine intervention in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, that's something that really connected us was, you know, I think, you know, our faith for the things that we don't know, right. And really kind of following wherever that path may take us. But you said some really important things that I want the listeners to hear, right. Is really some of the things that you stretch yourself for. One is, you know, I've got to stand out. I want to be smarter than other people. But you also ask for many women, they don't ask for what they want and they don't, you know, feel like they're worthy enough or they don't feel confident enough. You know, you kind of, you know, stuck the gasoline on that piece and you just ignite it. Right. And so even though you went through a lot of life changing things, big ones, and I remember, you know, speaking to you for the first time with half your head shaved, right? And just had brain surgery and you're studying and getting ready to take your tests and all the things that we got to do in EMBA, right? Which is daunting to say the least. Um, but you rose above it. And I said, that's just so inspiring for me to hear your story, Alyssa. And I want to go back to your company you know, because where you are today with Illuminate, give the viewers, you know, a little bit of the story behind Illuminate, you know, why you created the company, where you are at today, and, you know, just kind of how exciting it is from where you've come from way back in 2011 and where you are today. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Dina. I, you know, I have had some incredible people through my life um, that really supported me, but there were a few people in particular, Dr. Luke Vaughn, who just always believed in me. He just wanted me to be a doctor. He was, he was, he had lectured me 
multiple times about why was I not in the medical field. And um, my uncle had had, had a series of, I think, six spine fusions, maybe se uh, six spine fusions and mm -hmm. multi multiple failures. Mm -hmm. And when I picked up a line, a, dis a distribution line for a spine company, uh, one of my favorite people in orthopedics, Russell Walter, uh, director of Smith and Nephew, he said, I would, why are you in spine? The screws back out, the rods break. Uh, it just seems like a nightmare. And I'm like, why are they doing that? And then I saw my uncle affected so severely by it. Um, and so I just started, I saw an implant in the foot and I'm like, why couldn't we do this in the spine? And uh, it led me to start sketching out some things and a longevity based spinal fixation system. Um, and uh, I, Emba gave me the tools to bring the confidence to the table to where people would listen. I, I'm, always been good at presenting, but whether people would listen or not to some random girl that has a sales background uh, in orthopedics in Springfield, Missouri was <laughs> where, uh, where people could lose confidence in me. And so WashU, I credit WashU so much for growing that confidence and connecting the dots to people that would believe in me and would mm -hmm. believe in the concept. Uh, and I've developed some strategic pro uh, partners uh, through WashU that have exponentially grown concept into reality. And it's very exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. That's so cool. That's just so cool. I think it goes back to, you know, those strategic partners, right? And going back to this confidence piece, um, truly, it sounds like that was a game changer for you um, over the last couple of years. As, is that piece. Um, and certainly would love for you to share a couple of three tips would you give a woman who wants to change where they are right now today in their career? Stop caring what other people think. <laughs> what people think of you is none of your business. If you are truly loyal, if you know exactly who you are, which took me a long time to develop. And I, I went through, uh, uh, personal, a lot of personal development um, and growth and challenges. And I decided that I was listening to what other people thought, it, thought mm -hmm. of me to define who I was. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't true. If I am quirky, I'm okay with being quirky. If I um, am and I'm a little strong um, or I come across as overly confident, that's who I am. What you see is what you're going to get. Um, and if I'm too much of a people pleaser. That is one of my weaknesses. I acknowledge it. Acknowledge your weaknesses. Find mm -hmm. people that believe in you and like who you are as a person and, um, and partner with them. If they do not believe in your concept or you or, or how uh, your idealism, mm -hmm. then find people that do. If you are mm -hmm. working with a series of people and you're not being uh, brought to the table, allowed a seat at the table, make your own table with those people that believe in you. Um, there's too many opportunities right. out there. And I saw too many uh, leaders where I was like, you know, I, I think Michelle Obama said a quote I, about, she spoke about how she realized that they weren't actually brilliant geniuses um, that she was meeting. And that is not her quote, but it, it, it was relaying that type of, and that's what I realized. These yeah. are just people doing yes. the best they can with the tools that they have. And so yes. by judging them, expect to be judged. And uh, as I am not going to judge somebody, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on myself, ensure that I'm being true to myself. If I'm not, mm -hmm. then I apologize to myself or apologize to the people around me. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and allow myself to be human. Yeah, I love that. And I heard you say a couple of things really important, um, just to reiterate them. Find your tribe, right? So if you don't have your tribe, find your tribe, right? And then um, a quote that you shared with me a while back, and you talked about the, the table, but back then you said, bring the chair. So if you don't have your chair, bring your chair to the table. So I love that. So that's super great tips. What's your best advice for women who are fear fearful for asking for what they want? Do the work. 
there's a reason why you're fearful. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to develop yourself personally and every single day. I never realized how hard it is to be happy. Mm -hmm. You have to work on being happy every single day. Mm -hmm. It does not come. Your partner is never going to do it. Your, uh, your child's accomplishments are never going to do it. Your, your job title is never going to do it. It's personal development from the core, the soul core of our, your being. And you have to acknowledge it. And most of the time you have to voice it to people that you trust. And when you do the work, you find a sense of peace with yourself, mm -hmm. who you are. And, if, uh, and, and once you get to that development phase, um, uh, you get, and you, you don't have to be educated, but uh, with, with regards to a uh, financial or educational entity, but you have to be educated about what you do. So mm -hmm. read every single day. If you're going to be a voice that matters, if your opinion is going to matter, you're going to have to base it on facts, uh, not just perception. And mm -hmm. every time you make a bold statement, you're going to have to have something to back up your claim. So uh, people need to trust you and they're not going to trust you if you don't trust yourself. Oh, exactly right. And also, you know, it's a decision to wake up how you want to choose to face the world that day. And I, you know, with all the pandemic, it's some of the one of the biggest things that I hear women struggle with every day is, you know, decision that this is how today is going to be. I may not feel great today. Yesterday might have been a real crappy day, right? And maybe some real challenges, but being able to, you know, make a decision for yourself about how you're going to go forward is an important piece of success. And it really is around what you were talking about is mindset, but also, you know, that education and really making sure that uh, you stay ahead of the game, know your facts, right? Don't assume anything. Uh, no. And I think that's what I heard you say. Yes. What books, blogs, and podcasts do you listen to, Alyssa? <laughs> I am such a nerd <laughs> and I love this about myself. I really do because uh, I, uh, because of orthopedics, I had to develop this sense of um, uh, belonging. And the only way I belonged was by educating myself. And so the podcast and the books that I read and uh, I read papers every single day. I, I, I and I love LinkedIn for that. Uh, to be connected across the world to people that are publishing those papers. And I love seeing what certain individuals are publishing regarding mm -hmm. regenerative medicine, cancer treatments. Um, yeah. I'm a firm believer that we, uh, if you look at a tree, um, there are bark and there are like the internal growths in, in the weaving and the network that's built within you. And it all connects together. So therapies mm -hmm. that you can use across the board can be relevant within orthopedics um, and spine development. Um, I, I'm really enjoying the compound, uh, the, the the magnesium. Learning about magnesium right now. Um, I think that, I think there's a lot of potential with regards to temperature uh, and magnesium uh, to help mm -hmm. uh, stimulate uh, healing within the body and mm -hmm. lowering inflammation and getting the right pH balance and. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I genuinely find it fascinating and <laughs> yeah, but I am watching my pleasure right now is Ted Lasso on Apple TV. So. <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's good. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so I'm going to go to the question that I love asking, you know, all of my guests and that is if you could go back in time and you could do it all over again, what would you tell your younger self? I would have found Dina earlier. But you know what I would tell myself is don't worry. Just mm. don't worry so much. Uh, mm. If you fail, there's a reason for your failure. Mm. If um, you will get to where you need to be and um, you will find, even though, you might have almost died a few times in the process. <laughs> you will get yes. to where you need to be and, yes. uh, for, for internal growth and development and happiness. 
I love that. I love that, you know, and I love that about you, Alyssa, you know, you're the person who's going to live life no matter what, right? No matter what is thrown at you, you're going to live life. And the glass is always half full. It's never half empty. You're always looking for the next best thing. So that's very inspiring for me. So thank you for sharing that. So last question for you. Um, I know that you experienced the um, benefit, or at least I think it could have been a benefit for you in a diagnostic thinking group. You know, tell me a little bit about what your opinion is of that experience for you. Well, a very rare. So I'm in Springfield, Missouri, and also especially during quarantine, um, it can be difficult connect to connect with other women, uh, particularly women uh, who are in positions that are similar or have been. Um, and so I had a unique opportunity. You, pro you provided me a unique opportunity as I was developing my company to strategize and ga gain insights and opinions from these women. And um, I thought that there was a beautiful moment because you have to be go in being vulnerable and willing to discuss mm -hmm. the nitty gritty and the dirty parts of it. And the entrepreneurial process is a roller coaster and it's yep. very lonely and very isolating. Uh, particularly doing it during a pandemic. So, uh, especially when you're getting brain surgery. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. And, yes. and, you know, there's a lot of emotional um, uh, issues with uh, entrepreneurialism. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, you just need to have that support system and you need to have people that will take off your blinders for you. Mm. And if you don't do that, you're setting yourself up for failure because your opinion is not always going to be right. And your direction may not always be, be right. And it's a constant state of correcting, of, mm -hmm. of analyzing and correcting. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Um, did it feel safe for you going to those dark places? <laughs> Because that's a, that's a hard thing to do for us. You know, it, it, is. Is. it is. And yeah. I, and part of that self-development was I had done, I, I've done quite a bit of work. Um, I think it's, I think it's really important to, to do internal work, uh, whether that's with a therapist or with a group or, or whatever, it's really important. So you feel comfortable being vulnerable and sharing that. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not ready to um, be vulnerable, then you're not going to get the most out of it. Yeah. And vulnerability is hard to come by because it's so, it is one of the greatest leadership skills that we can take forward in life and work. And it's so hard for people to do because they're afraid they're going to be judged. But if you can just trust that place to be able to let people where you are, you know, kind of lends itself a, a great um, ability to create these really strong communities so that we can create those heroes for ourselves and others around us. So, um, Alyssa, I want to thank you for today and closing. I think you are exceptional. I can't wait till Illuminate comes out. It's going to be changing lives for patients all over the world. And the Confident Women Leader Show is here to help women go from chaos to confidence, stepping in, stepping up, being the change that organizations need them to be. And we do know that women are changing the world. We'll see you on our next broadcast next week on the Confident Women Leader Show.